Hey guys, I'm here, also known as 8 Vinyl Low, bringing you guys another video. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit of everything, uh, and I'm still kind of getting over my cold, so just bear with me through this. But, um, today's video is going to be a mixture of everything, kind of going off of what I talked about in my last video. I have some concert updates that I want to uh, update you guys on in terms of concerts that I've been to that are long overdue, some story times with that, really cool memorabilia and signed records based off of that, so I want to do that. Uh, I also want to show you guys just records that I've picked up over the past kind of month or so, and then also show you the records that I picked up on my trip to St. Louis last weekend. So, uh, this video might be a little longer, so bear with me as I kind of get through this, but we'll get moving. So, uh, first off, the thing that I wanted to talk about first is couple concerts that I went to back in July that I didn't get around to kind of talking about in my videos. Uh, I've been so busy with student teaching and everything else that I just never got to kind of dedicating time to, to talk about these and I'm not going to go into into great depth uh, with these things but I did want to kind of share with you. So if you follow me on Instagram you might already kind of have an idea of, of these things but if you don't and you're, you're, you have me on here, then this will kind of be a first, first, uh, first time hearing about it, I guess. Um, so a couple things here. First thing is I went to go see, at the end of July, two, two different concerts. I saw Blue Oyster Cult and Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult opened for, for Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, actually, and it was a great show. Um, I might insert some pictures here, so, but really cool thing that I wanted to share was at the end of that show, I not only got a guitar pick from the guitarist of Joan Jett, and I can't think of his name off the top of my head, uh, but this was really cool to get, as well as a guitar pick from Joan Jett herself. Super uh, cool guitar pick, and you, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I do collect guitar picks. That's like my other thing that I do outside of record collecting. And Joan Jett's guitar pick is extremely uh, wanted in the in the guitar pick world. One, because it's just an extremely unique design. It has like that shark fin design instead of that, that usual uh, kind of guitar pick shape. It's a little different and uh, super cool. So that came off of her mic stand. And that was, that was incredible, just an incredible show in general. Um, next thing that I wanted to share is that at the end of July as well, I went to go see one of my favorite musicians in the world, uh, John Mayle. And John Mayle is 85 years old, and he's still touring, he's still going, and I'll get into my very brief concert review with that in a second. Uh, but he, it was an incredible show. Uh, long story short, try to wrap this up as quick as I can in terms of this story time. Got tickets to go see John Mayle. I saw in other postings and just things that I follow online that John Mayle, either before or after the show, signs things. And that you can meet him, take a picture, you, he'll, you know, sign records and things of that nature. So that definitely caught my attention. So uh, I ended up bringing, just in case, I brought a bag with me just, uh, you know, reusable grocery bag and I brought uh, three different records that I have John Mayles as well as a blues band uh, Harper harmonica that I ordered on Amazon for like six bucks because um, if you know John Mayle at all he's a great great harp player that's kind of his thing so I thought that would be cool as well if I if I did have the chance to meet him uh, yes I did have a chance to meet him he was actually set up he had a table set up as as doors open and as people were coming in he was set up in the back and I'm not really sure if people just didn't know that that was John Mayle sitting back there or they just didn't care which is weird because you're at a John Mayle show um, but there weren't a lot of people going over there so that's the first thing that I did when I walked in is, is head over to that table kind of stood in a very small line and uh, I, I met John Mayle shook his hand, introduced myself, just told him what a huge fan that I am of him and his music, 
and he was very appreciative of that. And so then I asked if he would be willing to sign some records that I brought. And he was very nice and said absolutely. And so just wanted to show you guys what I got signed. I got my uh, Blues Breakers, John Mayle and the Blues Breakers, A Hard Road. This is the one with Peter Green. There is his signature there. Super cool. My second favorite album of his. I also got the collector's edition of John Mayle and the Blue Breakers with Eric Clapton, the classic Beano album. This is the collector's edition of that that I also had signed. And then my grail, like one of my grails just in general that I ended up getting, but then to get it signed by one of my favorite musicians of all time. This is the Blues Breakers, John Mayle. This is the one with Eric Clapton again, the Beano record, an original uh, U.S. pressing and copy of this, this record. So, although I would have loved to have an original U.K. pressing on the Deca label, uh, I was happy to pick this copy up when I did, and then to go get it signed was super, super cool as well. So, um, one of the coolest just pieces of music memorabilia that I have in my collection. And to get it signed to is super awesome. So there's that. And then uh, I asked if we could take a picture, we, he did. And then uh, after having him sign all three of those albums, I was a little scared to ask if he would sign my harmonica that I brought. Uh, but I, I threw it out there, cause why not? He was so nice already and of course, he said absolutely and so the six dollars blue band purchase from Amazon paid off and I'll take this out here that is John Mayo's signature on a blues band harmonica so super super cool to have that um, so that concert was incredible at 85, you don't really know what to expect. You kind of just go to those shows for like nostalgic reasons. But that, by that point, you know, 85, uh, much older, don't know what to expect going in. But I will tell you straight up, bias aside, for me just loving John Mayle, it was an incredible show. Uh, not only was John Mayle great, but his backing band was incredible. Um, you know, a show with an 85 year old, oh, they're going to play an hour, maybe hour and a, and a half max. They played for like two and a half hours. It was, it was an incredible show. Uh, he looked like he was having the time of his life up on that stage, and it was just, it was awesome. Um, but I, I do want to move on here. Uh, what I do want to get into now is just some recent updates. Uh, vinyl that I've accumulated over the past kind of month. Uh, some thrift store finds, some just general uh, record store pickups. And then I'll get into what I picked up in St. Louis on that adventure to go see Cheap Trick and ZZ Top uh, last weekend. And then, uh, and then that'll be it. So, first thing in terms of, let me get kind of this stack pulled over here so I can work with this. Uh, first thing here that I do want to show is just some general, general updates and pick up. First off. If you follow me on Instagram, you remember that I picked up Thelonious Monk's Monk Stream Classic Record here. Picked this up for a dollar at a Goodwill. Now, I haven't talked about it. I don't know if I shared this in a video or not, so if this is like new to you and 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 whatnot, then that's okay. But uh, I picked this up for a dollar at a Goodwill probably two months ago, and I wasn't sure about the condition at all. Um, if it were kind of any other generic record at Goodwill, I don't think I would have picked it up because when I went to look at the condition of the the record, the vinyl itself, it was horrible. And it wasn't something that I would necessarily pick up besides it being a, a great record. Um, but long story short, for a dollar, for a classic album like this, and I don't know jazz that well, I'm not familiar with that genre at all, uh, but I am familiar with Thelonious Monk and then of course this this record. And so for a dollar, I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab it. It was recently after Bill from the Vinylverse, he posted his video where he got like a Grail album and ended up cleaning it and it turned from like a, like a good to a VG, VG plus kind of, and it inspired me. So I grabbed it, 
gave it a, a proper cleaning and you know what when I played it here's my update it plays great I mean not the best VG probably but for the condition that I saw it in and then for it to be able to just get to kind of uh, a little bit of a you know noisy surface noise there but nothing that's gonna disrupt play no skips nothing like that I am super super happy with this pickup and it is on that 2i Columbia uh, there so just wanted to give that update for those who were wondering uh, speaking of Bill from the Vinylverse, one of my local record shops had gotten an influx of used records over the summer and had a huge sale trying to get rid of and sell uh, off what they acquired. And so I was able to get a really good deal on five Genesis records. Again, Bill from the Vinylverse is probably super excited about this. Um, building up my Genesis here. After this haul, I'm missing a few more, I know. Uh, I know I'm missing um, the Revelation one or whatever it's called, and I, I think I'm missing a couple others, but I'll show you what Genesis I did pick up. I picked up all five of these for $15. Uh, the owner, he was just kind of going back and forth, all in amazing condition, by the way, so that kind of blew my mind as well. Uh, I just picked these up. They they weren't priced. I said, how much do you want for them? He said, how about 15? And I said, sold. So first thing here is a 12 inch uh, EP. This is Genesis Spot the Pigeon. It has match of the day on it and, uh, and pigeons and inside out. So I'm not really familiar with these, but uh, one reason why I picked it up is because it is on uh, this blue vinyl and I think Bill said that this was a Canadian pressing if it was on on blue vinyl so uh, like I said I'm not too familiar with this EP or any of the songs on it but you can't go wrong kind of putting it in the lot and getting a good good deal um, also grabbed selling uh, selling England by the pound by Genesis I know this is an extremely well liked uh, record by them so super excited to to get that. Also got uh, Trespass by Genesis, and like I said, I, I don't know Genesis a lot, but I'm trying to get into them, kind of explore their discography. Uh, I have Foxtrot, I have uh, Seconds Out that that Bill sent. I had a, I have a couple others that I picked up, but I, I'm still adding to to that. Also picked up a Trick of the Treat by Genesis. Still in the original shrink here which was cool and the shrink's not too bad so I'll probably keep it on. Here is Duke, classic Genesis Genesis records in the 80s I think. Yep, 1980 it was released. Um, I am more familiar with this than I am with any other Genesis. So, um, but yeah, so those were the the five Genesis albums that I was able to pick up for 15 bucks. So, uh, you can't go wrong with that. Um, moving on here, some kind of new vinyl purchases that uh, I've picked up. One of which here is the Ides of March Play On. This is their 55th anniversary uh, record that they've put out. It has a, a mixture of a bunch of different songs f that include um, a bunch of different artists. So I know for example, they have collaborations with Kathy Richardson and um, and uh, I can't think of I can't think of other people off the top of my head, and I have yet to listen to this. I, I did take the shrink off, and I did look at the inside because the gatefold is beautiful. Um, for those of you who are not too familiar with the Ides of March, they are a Chicago-based band, uh, most known for their song and record entitled Vehicle, and I'm a huge Ides of March fan. I talk about them a lot in my videos, so I won't get into into that now, but they did release this 55th anniversary record, and I, I jumped right on that, so definitely recommend looking into this. Like I said, they have a lot of great collaborations on here, and I'm drawing a blank right now, but um, maybe I'll link like the Amazon link where you can get this, or just if you're interested in reading kind of the, the track listings and who they're collaborating with and stuff, but... Uh, very excited to 
to give that a, a proper listen. Finally, Jeff, if you're watching, this is going to be super exciting. Finally was able to purchase Rory Gallagher Blues. Great compilation album here. Jeff Kempen has shown this record on camera, on Instagram, talks it up. It's Rory Gallagher. You can't go wrong. Um, but I think this came out this year back in either April or May. And I finally, finally was able to, to buy that. Going off of uh, Jeff again, I won't say much about this, but I did pick this up. Thanks for that shout out. Haven't cracked it open yet, just got it in a few days ago, but excited to, to listen. I'm sure I'm going to love it. So, All right, this was picked up probably a couple weeks ago, and I haven't had time to film or, or share with you guys, but this is the 60th anniversary reissue. Uh, from uh, John Lee Hooker's debut record on Riverside Records. Like I said, this is the 60th anniversary reissue, uh, mastered from the um, original uh, stereo tapes here. Classic John Lee Hooker record that I acknowledge I will never own probably an original of. Um, so this will this will stand in its place. And uh, I have cracked this open and it sounds incredible. So I haven't listened to it straight through yet, but I have just listened to it a little bit and I cannot wait to actually sit down and properly uh, listen to this very classic record. So love John Lee Hooker. All right, also picked up, this was inspired by Mazzy. Uh, he had made a video talking about this specific artist, kind of talking him up and Although I knew of the artist and knew of a couple songs from this artist, I wasn't too familiar with his work, so I ended up picking up this record by Donovan. This is Sunshine Superman, a song that I am familiar with. Uh, I'm also familiar with Season of the Witch, but I don't know much else. And I heard this is kind of like psych pop. Like I said, not too familiar with Donovan, but I do know those songs and I love them. So when Mazzy kind of made a video about it, I just jumped up and, and bought this record when I saw it. So excited to, to listen to this. Speaking of Mazzy, and this is now going back a little bit, these are some Goodwill finds. And I will tell you when, so Mazzy had posted his 500 subs and now he's at like 900 or something crazy, but in like a month. Uh, but he had posted his 500 subs contest, and the next morning, and I watched it at night, the next morning, uh, I went to Goodwill and saw this record by the Fairport Convention that I never heard of before. Mazzy had talked about it, saying that it's his record that he thinks that everybody should own, um, and I never heard about it, and I put it on my want list that night. Next morning, going to Goodwill, what do I see? that same record. That was crazy. That was such a weird coincidence. Um, so I grabbed that. Also at Goodwill, I found Hold On, I'm Coming by Sam and Dave. Everybody knows that song. Um, this one's nice too. Comes on that yellow Stax label. And uh, it's in the shrink, but the shrink's kind of eh, so I'll probably end up taking that off. And then at the same Goodwill, there was the classic Taj Mahal record. Wanted it for a long time uh, and had a chance there. Again, it came in the shrink, although um, it's kind of ripped up, so we'll, we'll see if that stays. And last but not least, we have the Crying Shames, another Goodwill purchase for 99 cents, uh, Sugar and Spice. So, lots of classic, classic records. All right, 20 minutes in and we're getting to the St. Louis uh, vinyl hall here. So we're making good timing getting, getting through this. Um, so when I went to St. Louis to go see Cheap Trick and ZZ Top, uh, I had spent the night and then went to, to kind of explore different record shops the next day before I, I came back home. And I went to a variety of different shops. I went to um, Planet Score, 
I think it's Planet Score. I went to Vintage Vinyl. Vintage Vinyl was incredible. And I, I found one of, not a major grill, but definitely a grill of mine that I've wanted for a while. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, also went to Euclid Records. They had really good bargain bins. And, um, and, and so did Vintage Vinyl. Vintage Vinyl was having kind of like a sale that weekend that I was there. So they were getting rid of things. And I know... I think it was like buy a record over four dollars or something it went free like some really good deal so um, definitely took advantage of that but we'll go we'll go through these here I didn't pick up a huge haul but I did did pick up some good albums first thing here at Euclid like I said they had a great used uh, or not used uh, bargain bin section I think they were trying to weed out from what they they brought in over the summer um, but all of these were two dollars I will never leave BB, BB King uh, for two dollars so grab this this is to know you is to love you with the uh, hype sticker on it not as familiar with this record this is from 1973 uh, as much as I am with his other stuff but I will never leave BB King for two dollars so I'm sure I'm sure this will be great and I'm gonna take that shrink off because it's bugging me I also found for two dollars and the vinyl itself is in fine condition the the cover is kind of rough so maybe that's why it was in the bargain bin but this is the Bee Gees first I've seen this talk about talked about in the VC a lot as well the Bee Gees before they were kind of Saturday Night Fever Bee Gees they were this kind of more psych based Bee Gees uh, of course I got Odessa as a gift from Jeff for my birthday um, but now I have the Bee Gees first so excited to explore more into early Bee Gees. Also grabbed for two bucks, Rolling Stones, Still Life. Uh, not too familiar with this record as well. It looks like it's from 82. Um, but can't, can't go wrong with $2 Rolling Stones, so grab that. The spine you can see is ripped up, so that's probably why it was cheap, but you play the wax and not the cover so I'm, I'm not gonna leave that for a couple bucks also grabbed here the blues project this is a reunion concert from Central Park so live album uh, can't go wrong here again love the blues project and uh, I, I have not heard this live album before so I'm sure it'll be it'll be a good listen and then being in st. Louis here um, I was surprised to see this in the bargain bin but this is hometown hero here for for anybody who's from st. Louis this is the the London sessions with Chuck Berry also picked this up for two dollars so um, lots of great like I said bargain bargain grabs at uh, at Euclid records um, also okay this was a mail order this is something that I saw I think Steve Carlson showed it a while back and I put it on my want list and it eventually came up for a really good price and so I snagged it this is uh, Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry two guitar greats um, I I had not seen it until Steve talked about it and like I said I can't remember when this was but I think it was a while back now um, but super excited to to give this a listen because I'm a fan of both Berry and, and Bo Diddley so I'm sure it's going to sound amazing and there's going to be incredible guitar work in this. Alright, so moving on to the last section of this video here, Vintage Vinyl. Uh, they, Like I said, they were having their, their kind of blowout sale there. Um, buy an album over $5, get one free, so that would mean that you kind of get a $5 record for free. So that was, that was nice. Um, they also had, uh, they had filled their bargain bin, which was nice as well. And so that was kind of all, all fresh and new the day that I went. And so these were $2 each uh, as well. This is the best of Manfred Mann. Great uh, early kind of psych pop. Also has that element of British blues in it. Uh, so, so grab that because I, I have been wanting to pick up some Manfred Mann. And I refuse to leave this, uh, especially for the price, even though the condition of the, the cover is not good. 
I will never leave Rory Gallagher either. This is Photo Finish by Rory Gallagher. And it was a couple bucks. And like I said, the, the cover is kind of shot. It does have that demo not for sale um, stamp on the back, which I thought was interesting. So not going to leave this, even though the cover is a little shot. The wax itself is, is just fine. All right, here are the records that I got that buy one for $5, get one free. I bought two $5 records, and I, I added some more British Blues to my collection. Uh, added some more Spooky Tooth, of course, Spooky Tooth being with Mick Jones, who later goes on to, to form Foreigner. Um, British Blues Band here, and I picked up their records. Witness, this is $4.99. Uh, this is from 73 so not too familiar with this record although i know spooky tooth don't know this i think this is a more popular record of theirs i know i picked up a couple months ago their record spooky spooky two which is one of the greatest british blues albums of all time probably top 20 somewhere it'll fit in there great record by them um and i enjoyed it so much that i wanted to give more listen to to them, so I picked up Witness for five bucks, and then I got their album You Broke My Heart, so I put, so I busted your jaw, I got this for, for free. So that was kind of nice um, to, to add more spooky to, to my collection and just continue to build up uh, my British Blues collection. And going off of that, my, my major grill, we've made it to the end here, from, uh, from probably the past month. Um, Picked this up at Vintage Vinyl for a great price. Paid up for it, but still a great price for, for what it is and the condition that it's in. And this is Tony McPhee's, uh, the two sides of, of Tony McPhee, so his solo record here. Uh, this is a UK press, and it, it, it's, it's incredible. It is incredible. Um, again, Tony McPhee. He is an original member from the Groundhogs, the band the Groundhogs, UK, British Blues, uh, progressive rock, uh, acid, heavy, fuzz guitar, whatever genre you want to put them in. Uh, I still consider them British Blues because they do have those elements, although a lot of people put them into prog rock, which works too, whatever floats your boat. Um, but I love the Groundhogs, one of my favorite bands, and Tony McPhee, T.S. McPhee, one of my favorite guitarists. And to finally have his his solo record in my hand, incredible stuff. Again, I cannot recommend it enough. If you love, if you love the Groundhogs, if you love kind of that heavy fuzz, uh, prog rock, uh, even British blues sounding sounding guitar work, I can't recommend this more. So, got this. This is with like I said, a UK press with that die cut. Uh, there under his eye making tears uh, and that that blue that you get in there is from the inner sleeve which is super cool so phenomenal condition I can I'm just so excited to have this in to, in my collection and and to play it so anyway major girl picked this up super excited so we made it through just under 30 minutes. I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and I will see you guys for, for my next video. Bye, guys.